Hello friends, this video on oscillations part 1 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. The topics which we will cover in this lesson are Introduction Periodic and oscillatory motions Simple harmonic motion Simple harmonic motion and uniform circular motion Velocity and acceleration in simple harmonic motion Force law for simple harmonic motion Energy in simple harmonic motion Some systems executing simple harmonic motion Damped oscillations Forced oscillations and resonance So let us introduce the chapter with what is oscillation. Till now in all our previous lessons we talked about several kind of motion. For example rectilinear motion where a particle moved in a straight line, circular motion where an object moved along a circular path, projectile motion and so on. So here in this lesson we will again study about a new kind of motion which is often known as oscillatory motion or oscillation. So before I tell you what is oscillation, the best example that you can think of is the pendulum of your clock. If you look at your wall clock, you would see the pendulum always moving to and fro, right? So that kind of motion is nothing but oscillatory motion or oscillation. So, how we define oscillation is periodic to and fro motion. As obvious, what is periodic? Any motion which repeats itself after a regular interval of time. So, oscillatory motion is a periodic motion. It's a periodic to and fro motion. What do you mean by to and fro? That is, let us suppose if this is the initial position of the particle, after a regular interval of time, it comes back to its original position. So that is to and fro. So it goes back and again it comes back to where it started from. So oscillation is a periodic to and fro motion. Let us look at the pendulum of your clock. It is somewhat like this, right? So what happens in this case? If you observe very carefully, this pendulum bob moves to and fro from its initial position. Let us suppose that this is the position of the bob. Let us say this position. So it moves to, comes back, again crosses this position, goes back to this extreme end and again comes back to where it started from. So this is basically moving to and fro and also it is repeating its motion. The same kind of pattern is being repeated after a regular interval of time. So this is known as oscillation. Now when you consider this example, you might be thinking that in our, I mean, in our day to day life, we often call such kind of motion as vibration. We often say that this object is vibrating. If you think even vibrating Vibration is nothing but a to and fro motion and in vibration as well the motion is periodic. So how do we differentiate between an oscillation and a vibration? Are they both the same or they are different? Well, there is no significant difference between oscillation and vibration. Basically, both of them are periodic motion and both of them are to and fro motions. But there lies a slightest difference because of which they both have been assigned to different names. When the frequency is small, we call it oscillation. So what is frequency now? Even in your general English, frequency is something, it is a quantity which defines after in what interval a particular motion is getting repeated. For example, if I consider 
the pendulum of the clock again. Here if you observe the motion of the pendulum, it moves quite slowly to and fro and periodically. So you can very easily observe the to and fro motion of the pendulum. So this kind of motion can be categorized as oscillation where the frequency is very small. That is where the same motion or the same pattern is getting repeated after a considerable period of time. So you can observe the repetition. Whereas when the frequency is very high, that is when the to and fro motion happens very rapidly that you can't even observe when it goes to the extreme end, when it comes back to its original position. In those kind of situation, we call the motion as vibratory motion or vibration. For example, you can think of the string of your guitar. When you play a guitar and you move your fingers over the strings of the guitar, what happens is that the string vibrates. So even in that case, this is how the string vibrates, right? So it moves very rapidly from its initial position or from its normal position along both the ends. But the motion is so fast or so rapid that you cannot observe very minutely when it goes to the extreme position, when it comes back to its original position. So this is what is the difference between oscillation and vibration. If the frequency is small, it is oscillation. That is, the motion happens comparatively slowly. So that is oscillation. And when any oscillation with a very high frequency is termed as vibration. Just now I told you that oscillatory motion is a periodic motion. So does that mean that all the motions which are oscillatory will be periodic? Or is it something like all periodic motions which we can see around us will be oscillatory? So let us see that. Every oscillatory motion which you can think of is periodic. Because periodic is a term that defines oscillatory motion. So it is a necessary condition for a motion to be oscillatory. So every oscillatory motion will be periodic. That means every oscillatory motion will repeat itself after a fixed interval of time. But every periodic motion need not be oscillatory. Some of the periodic motions will be oscillatory, but not all of them. Now let us look at one example of both. When you take the example of the pendulum, it is an oscillatory motion, right? Now, since it is an oscillatory motion, so the definition itself says that it is a periodic to and fro motion. Hence, the motion is periodic. But when I talk of any other periodic motion, for example, let us think of the motion of the earth around the sun. So the motion is periodic, right? The earth travels around the sun in a circular orbit in a periodic interval of time. After regular intervals, it repeats its path. But is that motion oscillatory? No, it is not. So, it is not always necessary that any periodic motion will be oscillatory, but vice versa is always true. That is, an oscillatory motion must be periodic. Now, let us take an overview of the oscillatory motion. There are certain very common terms which we will keep using as we go ahead with this lesson. Now, in practice, what happens is oscillating bodies eventually come to rest at their equilibrium positions. So now let me tell you, when I talk of any oscillating body, what do I mean when I say equilibrium position? Let us take the example of your pendulum. So the mass which hangs along this thread is known as bob of the pendulum. I am introducing this terminology before the beginning of the chapter so that when I, because off and on I will be using the same terms. Now when the motion starts, it goes to the extreme position. We call this extreme end as the extreme position. 
it comes back and again goes to the extreme other end. So this is also the extreme position. Now what is equilibrium position? Equilibrium position is that position where the pendulum tends to go when it tries to come to rest. I mean if you take the bob to one end and just leave it. So it will oscillate from one end to the other for some time and gradually it will come to rest. So when it comes to rest, what do you think would be the position of the bob? It would come to the central position. So this position is known as the mean position or the equilibrium position of the oscillating object. So which is the oscillating object here? The bob is the oscillating object here. Now here you imagine the scenario as a stone tied to a thread and it is hanging from some support, right? Now suppose you take the stone and take it to one of the extreme corner and then just leave it. So what will happen? It will start oscillating. But do you think that it will keep oscillating infinitely? No. After a certain period of time, it will come to rest because of the frictional forces around. So, when it comes to rest, do you think it will come back to the extreme position and stop there? No, it will come back to its mean position. So, mean position or equilibrium position is that position where the object tends to come to rest on its own when no external forces applied. Right? So this is your main position or equilibrium position. These two are the extreme positions and this mass which is tied to a thread is termed as the bob of the pendulum. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thank you once again.